What's up everyone, Paxton here, and welcome to another episode of The Dugout, presented by Mizuno. Hey Jeff, thanks for calling into The Dugout. How are you doing? I am good. I'm glad to be calling in and hanging with you. Perfect. Love that. All right, let's dive right in. So we've wrapped up the regular season. Overall, what's your take on how the 2020 season played out overall? Uh, odd. <laughs> is, that, is that a word I can use? Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think first off, you know, going through just the pandemic and, and the rules that the players had to follow and everything, you know, that was kind of strange in the first place. But then you throw in the Braves almost had like four or five different seasons in one. They were healthy, then they weren't, then they got healthy, then they weren't. And, you know, but I, I think at the end of the day, what they did by going 35 and 25 um, with really – I hate to say it, a depleted pitching staff, you know, I'm not trying to knock anybody, but a, a pitching staff that we saw struggled for a majority of the year. Um, but to have the offense, the bullpen, and really the players just to keep going. I mean, it really is amazing to think about, you know, if one player on your team was to test positive or, or even be around that you get shut down for three or four days and the Braves did not get one game canceled in 60 games. And I think that's a testimony to, to Snit and the coaching staff and the players for, for quite frankly, following the rules and doing what they had to do. I want you to grade the Braves, A, B, C, D, F, <laughs> and you can add plus or minuses if you're, if you're feeling like it. <clears throat> so let's start with lineup. What grade would you give the Braves lineup? I'll tell you what, I'm giving an A plus. I have not seen many lineups that have been that deep, um, that have done the damage that they've had and consistently as they have. I mean, when you look at Freddie and Azuna the last month, to do that for a whole month, I've seen people get hot for seven days. I've seen people get hot for 10 days. But to stay hot two guys like that for a month, the offense did everything and more I ever could have thought they'd do. So lineup, A+, plus, starting rotation. <laughs> you want me to be honest? Yes. <laughs> I'll say this, the starting rotation started the year with probably a B or C, and then halfway through the year, I, I'm, a tough, I'm a tough grader. You know, my dad was in education, my mom. Halfway through the season, an F, an F. You know, it just was what was not, we weren't getting innings. You know, I, I get it. It's not, when I go rotation, it's not just one guy. So, yeah, Max Fried was outstanding. But there's got to be three or four other guys, and it just was not there. Now, I will tell you this. Late in the season, I would give it back to, to a C because, you know, you had Ian Anderson come up, who was a breath of fresh air. I thought he did a great job. And then I loved the Kyle Wright I saw the last three starts. It's a guy I've been waiting to see do what he did. So with that being said, you know, they, they finished on a strong note. But you know the great thing, Paxton, they're going to have a chance this postseason to improve that grade and show us all what they've learned and how far they've come, and I can't wait to see it. I agree. So, okay, that was starting rotation. Moving into bullpen. Bullpen, I get an A. I get an A. I'll, I'll always give the offense a little more because I'm an offensive type guy. Uh, but, no, the bullpen was an A. They, they were the backbone of that team. They were the reason. Look, the bullpen threw more innings than the starting pitchers did in 60 games. And to be able to continue to, to excel and to continue to put those types of numbers, I thought it said a lot about the, the – not just the guys down in the bullpen, but really Alex Antopoulos, the way he maneuvered that bullpen and built the bullpen, he built it to do what they've done. And I think that's what hopefully we're going to see in the postseason. I agree. I agree. So moving into defense. I thought, I thought the defense, honestly, I, I would give it an A too, because I mean, look, you know, middle infield, the fact that we made three or four errors all year in the middle infield in 60 games, that's unheard of. As many games or as many balls are hit hard in different plays, um, it's crazy. And then behind the plate, I got to say, Travis and Tyler did a good job together. And, and then the outfield, look, you know, Adam Duvall is a really good defensive outfielder. And you throw him with Acuna and, you know, Nick, you know, I, I think, and Ender, when he's in there, I think you're seeing, um, you know, the – what what can be good and I think so I, I give them a, a, an A. Love it okay this is the last one overall grade of the Braves 2020 season. Well they overachieved as far as I'm concerned with the fact of what happened with the pitching 
You know, I, I knew we'd make the playoffs. The fact that we won our third NL East title and, you know, we're pretty much depleted on the pitching staff. You know, you had uh, Ozzy, Freddie, Acuna. Now, Freddie was, you know, back the first 15 games, but he really wasn't. He wasn't the Freddie we know from the COVID and not being healthy and ready to go. So with all the guys we've had hurt, I mean, I'd give this team an A. I think they, uh, you know, overachieved and – in a lot of different aspects, but I also know that they're going to get judged on what happens coming up. And uh, it's good. I want them to have that type of pressure. If they lose in the first round, it's a disappointing season. With this offense and this team, I think – but you know what? I think those guys would tell you the same thing. You know, just like when they lost 18 in the playoffs, not that disappointing. The Dodgers were a lot better team than the Braves. Last year you saw the disappointment and the hurt in the guys' faces, and, I, and that's why – I'm, I hope that uh, we look back on this in a couple of weeks and, and know where this team's gone. No, I completely agree. So that is a perfect transition into postseason. It is here. Finally, we're ready to watch some October baseball. I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with previewing this wild card matchup of the Braves versus the Reds. What do you got on this series overall? Well, I'll go out and say this right off the bat. Trevor Bauer is a hell of a pitcher. He's a big time guy. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he's cocky, he's confident, uh, more cocky than confident, and he's going to do it. But I'll tell you what, I know he feels good about what he's doing, but he's he's going up against his Braves offense, who, uh, quite frankly, I don't think he wants to face. He's going to say all he wants, but the way they're swinging the bats, you know, I, I think the Reds, the way they're going to have to beat the Braves is Trevor Bauer, Luis Castilla, and Sonny Gray, who are their three main guys, they're going to have to give them seven, seven-plus innings every night because they don't have the bullpen the Braves do. They don't have the offense. They've scored four runs a game in the NL, which is second worst in the NL. So this is an offense that, although they have some good names and they have some players you'll recognize, hasn't exactly tore it up. And, you know, I'll say it again. There's a reason that you're 30 and 30. If you're that good and that powerful, why the heck are you sitting at 500? So with that being said, you know, this Reds team for me, you got to go out there and prove that you're as good as you think you are. And they're going to have to face this Braves lineup. So I'm, I'll take, I'll take this Braves lineup over that starters any day. So who do you think is one player on each team that could decide this series? I think Marcelo Zuna from the Braves standpoint, because Bauer, Bauer and some of these guys are not going to let Freddie beat him. So if, if a certain scenario comes up, he, they're putting the hand out, they're giving him four, you know, go to first base. So I think Marcel can have a lot to do um, with driving in some runs from this series. And on the, on the other side, for me, I, I think, you know, I won't say one guy, but I do think Trevor Bauer is going to have to come out and throw a gym game one, because I think if they lose with him starting game one, they are in rough, rough shape to pull out two without him on the mound. And so I think it's, I would like to say it's almost a must win for Cincy game one compared to the Braves. You want to win game one, but if you don't, I still like their chances of winning two in a row. What do you think could be the Braves' biggest weakness in this series? Uh, the fourth, fifth, sixth inning. If, if they don't, if Max Freed, if Ian Anderson, if Kyle Wright gets stuck in that third inning and you got to go to the bullpen, you know, you can do it for one game, Paxton. You can do it for – you cannot do it too many games in a row. And so I think that's the key. Give me five innings. And I, I've said that with – as much as I know Max can go longer, I feel confident the other guy. Give me five good innings. Let us be tied for the lead or have the lead. And then we can go down to that bullpen of ours and hold them at bay. And we haven't seen a bullpen, no offense to the Reds or any other team that has been able to hold down this offense for, for three, four innings in a, in a row this year. So – that's to me the 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 you know one weakness I would say that worries me a little bit is getting to that fifth six inning. No, I agree. So moving past the wild card series, then we go into a bubble format, which is definitely new for the MLB. How do you think the Braves are suited for the long stretch to the World Series in this bubble environment? Well, it's funny. I actually think that almost when I look at it, I think the Red series is almost. Just because it's a best of three, it's the unknown. But I actually like us winning. If we play, if we win, beat the Reds, we play the winner of the Marlins and Cubs. And I like the idea. I think we match up really good with the Marlins and Cubs, uh, you know, in the second round. So I think this team's got a really good shot 
me personally to play in the NLCS against the Dodgers. And I think, you know, there's no doubt I've said all year, the Dodgers are the favorite in the NL. Uh, you you got to give them a lot of credit for what they've done this year. But I do think the Braves are the second best team. And I think uh, this team, I don't think this team will have a problem in the bubble. If they're able to uh, abide by the rules all season, then you get to the playoffs. You tell yourself, you know what, it's two more weeks. You know, and I think all of us can do anything for two weeks. So I think the biggest thing is the Braves want to be going to Houston. And I think that's the key to this whole thing. Kelly actually wanted me to ask you this question. <laughs> if you could only bring five things that you can't live without to the bubble, what five things are you bringing? Well, well, I would have to tell you, number one, I wouldn't be allowed because it would be my golf clubs, but I don't <laughs> think they're going to allow us to play golf. <laughs> Uh, but that would have definitely been number one, okay. uh, you know, but if I had to bring five things, I would definitely bring some good wine because I got to have, got to have something to wind down after the game. Um, I would definitely, you know, I, I would sit there and say your family and your kids, but honestly, I, th I think, you know, that's going to be harder on them to have to sit in a hotel or do whatever they would have a, better time being at home with their friends and watching on TV. So I would say good wine. I would definitely say I would have to bring um, a good book, uh, something to dig into during the day when you have a lot of free time. I would definitely bring a lot of snacks because I'm very picky. I'm not the healthiest eater. So I need like, uh, you know, and I know the new thing for all the, you know, nutritionists with the baseball teams, we got to eat healthy. Well, that's not me. So I would probably bring a lot of a lot of chips and snacks and that. Uh, the fourth thing I would bring would be uh, for sure my computer, you know, whether you're Netflixing or whatever you want to do um, to do it. And then fifth would be playing cards. So, so we could, we could bet and play cards and play poker and, you know, cause I guarantee there's going to be a lot of poker being played. Oh, for sure. So what, what unhealthy snacks are you bringing? Huh? I mean, what not? I mean, I'm bringing, I'm bringing chips. I'm bringing Slim Jims. I'm bringing, uh, you know, ice cream for late at night if I had to. I have to buy that there. But, you know, just a lot of, lot of different stuff. You know, I eat the kids' pirate's booty all day. Uh, you know, the, the, little, the little white cheese curls. So I eat those like crazy. So that, that's what I'm bringing. I love it. I love it. So obviously, since this is an episode of The Dugout, I have to ask this question. What kind of dugout guy were you? Were you the water boy, the hype man, the quiet crowd observer? Who was Jeff Rancor in The Dugout? I was a mess because I had ADD, you know, <laughs> so I was walking up and down the dugout all the time. I, I actually remember one game I, I played in like four, started in like 300 something games in a row. And Bobby finally gave me an off day in 08 one day. And I remember after like the fourth inning of me walking up and down the dugout, he actually kicked me out of the dugout and told me to go up to the locker room because I was making him nervous by walking up and down the dugout. But I, I was, I was, a, I was a messy dugout guy. Um, you know, I, I really was like, I would, I, I remember I, I would like, and I know this is bad, but, you know, drink, drink water. I wouldn't go to the trash can. I'm throwing it on the ground. I'm throwing wrappers on the ground. I always tell people, I said, you ought to see a big league dugout after a game. I mean, it's disgusting. It really is. I'll be the first to tell you. Between sunflower seeds, gum, tobacco, other stuff, there's stuff everywhere. And uh, so I, I wasn't the, the neatest dugout guy. Okay, so going off of that, what is a legendary dugout story you have? Well, you know, you always get the, you know, I've had the pitchers come in, tip the water coolers over, you know, and it goes flying everywhere, you know, all that. But probably, probably one of my, one of my favorites was actually in, in the minor leagues, we were in Myrtle Beach and they, and they had a little toilet in the dugout to the side over there. And I'm not going to say the name of who the guy was because I don't want to call him out. But he did play in the big leagues for the Braves. And in one of the first few games, he got out and he came back and took a bat to the side of the toilet. And it broke and the water started flowing out all in the dugout. This is like in the second or third inning in Myrtle Beach. And so, so you, <laughs> the dugout is just, just starting to flood 
well, we're trying to play a game, you know, in the minor leagues, and I'll never forget. They fi- I think they finally just shut the water off and, and basically let it drain, and they had to fix it. But he had to pay for the porcelain toilet and, and get a new one. The fact that there was a toilet in the dugout to begin with is – just that whole story really has me a little, little rattled. I'm not going to lie. Minor, it's the minor leagues facts, and, and they, you'd be shocked at the things that happen in the minor leagues. And what, I... what, they don't exactly cater to a toilet with a beautiful room that you want where you can sit down and it's got yeah. candles and everything. You're taking yeah. what you can get. I can, I can only imagine. That seems like a longer conversation that we can have on another day. Thank you for taking the time to call into the dugout. This was great. All right, guys, it's finally here. Regular season is over, and it's time to enjoy some October baseball. The Braves have won their third straight division title, but that's not enough for this team. It seems like they're itching for more, which makes sense. This team has battled through injuries, major pitching issues, all during a shortened season in the middle of a pandemic. They have had some absolute standouts this season, though, with Marcelo Zuna lighting up the National League with not only home runs, but also RBIs. Then we got Freddie being Freddie and uh, Acuna being Acuna and, well, the Braves being the Braves. So this postseason run is about to be epic. Though this season was short, It really was fun. So thank you for joining us on The Dugout. The Dugout is presented by Mizuno, proud partner of Fox Sports South and official baseball gear sponsor of the Atlanta Braves. Get the latest baseball gear and other great Mizuno products for team sports, golf, and running footwear at MizunoUSA.com. Use code DUGOUT2020 for 20% off your next order of baseball, softball, or volleyball gear. Mizuno, reach beyond.